and I always loved having people around. Mm. And you know, number two, being um, an international student, you had to look for different means of income. Mm. So I thought it wise just by starting off by you know throwing parties. I used to rent banquet halls, mm-hmm. charge people about twenty bucks each. Yeah. Everyone was, you know, an international student with money, so <laughs> I that. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was something that was a fun experience, but at the same time, a big lesson learner, because, you know, I was taking risks at an early age. Mm-hmm. Of course, a lot of these things needed investment. Yeah. And I started working with people, building relationships at a, at a young age. Mm. So it was, it was definitely a fun experience, but yeah. also a big, um, you know, lesson uh, learner at an early age to mm-hmm. kind of learn how to manage your finances and, you know, just be disciplined. Yeah, yeah, I like that. So in Canada, you're talking about parties. You started Mad Drunkies International. Tell us about the concept. Tell us about how it was. Was this like your first ever event? And what did you learn from this experience? Well, MDD, Mad Drunkies, was uh, a name we came up with with a cousin of mine is called Gideon. Mm-hmm. We started Is it actually Gideon Zuki? Gideon Zuki. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shout, <laughs> out Gideon. shout out Gideon. We started, I think I was, what, 17? Mm-hmm. Was, I think 18, 19. Wow. We started in Nairobi. Mm-hmm. We, st- we, I think, through our first party, spin the bottle. Yeah. It uh, was, I think, sold out. Uh, we had uh, rented a, a house, mm. actually. Transformed the house to, uh, you know, a party concept with, Emptied the pool, made it a dance floor. That's crazy. Charged, uh, I think, 2K. Was this like in 2010? This is like about. 2010. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is fresh off high school before yes. I went to Canada. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, you know, something that, uh, you know, a lot of people our age, I think at that particular time was, you know, were going for events, mm-hmm. um, you know, and different other entrepreneurs who started their own mm-hmm. events at that time. Yeah. So it, it was something that we were keen on. And, uh, yeah, again, you know, looking at different ways to, to make money mm. in a, a genuine way. And uh, it was uh, something that was, for me, a life-changing experience because I found something that I loved. Mm. Yeah. How is it putting together an event? You know, us, we just come, we shed our hair. But then the actual planning, the actual organizing, take us through that. And what makes a successful event to you? You really, you know, have to, first of all, get your team right. Mm. Uh, I always tell people, of course, teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. And uh, from there, you know, everyone is set out to achieve the goal for the event. So Mm -hmm. right up from the planning stages, you know, you have to have your business plan. Mm -hmm. What exactly do you intend to to pull out and Mm -hmm. what's your target audience as an event promoter? Yeah. Of course, there are different other events, there are conferences, there are, you know, mm-hmm. um, parties. And, uh, you know, I've even seen now that, uh, you know, um, other entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs are actually doing, you know, girls only. Yeah, events girls well. only so events. Yeah. Selling out. So it depends on what is your target market, mm-hmm. getting the plan, getting the finances and mm-hmm. executing. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like getting the finances is the hard part (laughs) (laughs) because let me tell you, (laughs) Mina, it's been tea for tough. Uh, For us, we've been able to do a couple of events, but getting the finances or getting sponsors to come on board and brands to actually believe what you're doing and, you know, start, um, you know, helping you throughout the process is quite insane. How are you able to deal with that? Um, You kind of like have to, you know, just... First of all, believe in your idea mm. before someone else believes in your idea. Your idea, yeah. And, um, you know, of course, capital, the finances is something that is needed for the event to be possible. Mm. So you have to see, are you, are you looking at different sponsors mm-hmm. and what is aligned with your event? For example, if it's just, you know, for example, a 254 radio event. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you look at, okay, if you're selling this to someone who's going to invest in your idea, mm-hmm. number one, you're looking at the entrance charges and, you know, someone who's just going to straight up come and invest in your event and make money back. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you have sponsors who look at, okay, you know, this is the kind of reach and the target audience that's coming and the visibility I will get out of this. Mm -hmm. Uh, If my demographic target audience is between, you know, this particular age group Mm -hmm. falls with that plan. Yeah. So it's just like aligning your event to other companies' plans and, Mm -hmm. you know, seeing what 
when you're going to pitch doing your research and mm -hmm. you know talking to other companies EABL they all have marketing budgets so you just have to figure out how to get that money in your pocket how to get the money <laughs> 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 wow cuz it's yeah. quite quite interesting i feel like you have to be organized you also have to have like a good network around you yeah yes. so you started now managing a co there around 2013 I'm very curious as to why you thought about being a manager and how that came about. I think it aligned with just me being an event promoter mm -hmm. back in Canada and starting doing like big time events there. Mm -hmm. I worked under a guy called Chris J mm -hmm. who started the OVO festival. Okay. Uh, Drake. Dope. Uh, in Toronto so he used to get me to like you know promote and we had different you know uh, events with different celebrities we mm -hmm. did Bowers 25th birthday we did Mick Mill we did uh, Rick Ross so Crazy. a lot of artists at a very young age I was dealing with yeah and <coughs> through that I understood mm. the psychology behind you know managing an artist what their requirements are mm -hmm. getting them from you know the hotel to the venue that was a whole stressful process all mm -hmm. of them have their riders yeah that you have to fulfill mm -hmm. you know which checks out their different type of things that they have you know with international stars mm -hmm. uh, vehicles whatever you know uh, drinks even right to the to the club venue where they're performing mm -hmm. uh, the backstage the setup of the backstage so i was exposed to that at a very young, young age. age yeah and i built a network out say mm. at that age so with the managing a code it was more or less uh, something that was seamless and mm -hmm. i was already sort of experienced beforehand mm -hmm. so i just fell in you know it just something that uh, um you know she had a goal to be the number one artist and i said you know what let's do it yeah so did you look for her or she looked for you we met i mean you see we from the same area okay. which is rongo okay. in migori mm. so we met uh, cost through family and and friends. Mm -hmm. And we got to meet and kind of exchange ideas and you know she had all these uh, plans ahead. Mm -hmm. And I kind of aligned with her with her plans mm -hmm. and I saw the determination and I was also determined to achieve the goal. Mm -hmm. And sort of, you know, be there as a, a number two, you know, manager to a superstar which mm -hmm. she is right now. Yeah. And that's what people need to like understand, you know, in life you're not always going to be number one. At least fall back with someone's plan, mm. educate yourself, mm. learn the business, then you know, you can establish whatever your goals are. Yeah. Is she the only person you've managed so far? I've worked with a lot of other artists. Okay, please in tell us. Campaigns. Okay. Uh, and uh what I've managed to do more or less is, you know, with the digital marketing agency that mm -hmm. I run. Mhm. Mm I look at different campaigns where we work on, you know, even jingles where I, you know, I have artists like Kelechi who, mm. who did a very big jingle. I think it has almost 7 million views on YouTube with oh, wow. Wow. So we transformed a, a, a song to, you know, uh, to a jingle. Mm -hmm. which I think it was the first company, betting company that actually did it successfully. Yeah. You know? And um we different product placements we worked with had the band mm. for the song jaber mm -hmm. which was also a big success yeah so i've i've been around different artists that mm -hmm. you know key into my plan mm -hmm. and my whole vision is you know just trying to see the best way i can mm -hmm. to assist artists to team up with the corporate world mm -hmm. and vice versa nice let's talk about oaks media so it's an agency yes how long has it been running for and how was the initial start mm. yeah well <coughs> the marketing agency thing for me has been a big vision and dream of mine mm -hmm. uh i used to follow this guy called Steve Stout he's a businessman in in, in the US and mm -hmm. he was key to bringing the culture mm -hmm. to the corporate world mm -hmm. the hip hop culture to the corporate world that we see that is america corporate world mm -hmm. So you see him working with a lot of artists like Jay-Z and what he did with HP with Sprite mm. Reebok yeah uh, 50 Cent one of the earliest earliest um pioneers to mm -hmm. just merge the two mm. so I had a keen interest in you know his moves and what he's doing so mm -hmm. I always kind of envisioned you know how to merge and successfully use celebrities in marketing campaigns mm. and for it to make sense yeah yeah Nice. So, it's how old? Um 
the company now is going on to four years. Four years, successfully. yeah. Successfully. Mm-hmm. Uh, but me, of course, working with um, on the marketing agency side, mm-hmm. still playing that role. Mm-hmm. But I was managing now. So mm-hmm. we, we did a lot of different campaigns with uh, Kote, with Techno Mobile. Mm, Hennessy. Uh, Hennessy. 22 you know, Bed. Uh, 22 Bed. Better uh, Freak. Pep Tank, Better Freak, the nice. whole uh, scenario. So I've always been, any company I work with, I've always tried my level best mm-hmm. to figure out how or whoever celebrity I'm working with, how mm-hmm. do they fit in? And can we, you know, create successful campaigns that will, you know, of course... Uh, give a return for the company and also benefit the artists financially. Mm. When you are looking to get influencers or artists, what do you look for? What are there like certain qualities that you look for that can align with like a certain brand? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I normally tell people not every artist celebrity can sell a product. You mm. know? So it depends on the capability and the mindset of the celebrity you're working with. Mm-hmm. You know? So, for example, if you're selling liquid soap you know mm-hmm. you would not particularly look for someone who's not you know probably in the mind of the consumer mm. washing yes you know yeah sheets or whatever it is mm-hmm. so you look for that particular person who will fit in mm-hmm. to that role mm-hmm. of course you have to create a sort of advertisement either through you know tvcs or online marketing campaigns that will align through that mm-hmm. but making sure whatever budget you're going around, you have to promise, you know, your client that there'll be a return on that money. So it goes, you know, a long way beyond explaining and actually getting the artist, Mm -hmm. but articulating a campaign that will fit in to the company's agenda. Mm -hmm. And it comes, you know, across by the content that you put out, you know, whatever they're posting, you create actually articulate a six-month program Mm -hmm. that will fit in to both accomplishing the goal of the company Mm -hmm. and uh, making sure the product is exposed well by the celebrity and their audience as well. Okay. I'm quite curious. As probably an influencer who is listening in, what do they need to do to be able to target certain brands that they're looking to work with? Like, what do they need to do? Um, first, like, you know, you have to look at it professionally. Mm-hmm. How are you packaging yourself? You okay. Know, what's your profile? When you send me your profile, how have you packaged it? You know, mm-hmm. what's your audience looking like? Mm-hmm. Your demographics, you mm-hmm. know, you're able to explain that, how you relate to your audience, you mm-hmm. know, through music or different content that you produce mm-hmm. so really understanding who you are as a brand mm. and really not just going with the flow you mm. know? so when you're going into a meeting you have to really prepare yourself mentally mm-hmm. and be able to explain yourself you know excessively that someone can say okay you know what this person understands themselves mm-hmm. understand their audience if i give them this to sell whether it's a new refreshment drink mm. this thing will take off yeah yeah Incredible. Let's talk a bit about politics. Now, your grandfather is or was Hezekiah Oyugi. And a little birdie told me that you considered running for Dagoreti North MP. <laughs> is uh-huh. this true? <laughs> or um, I don't know. I'm quite curious. Is it something that you would consider getting into politics? Um, it's something that has crossed my mind. Mm-hmm. Of course, being you know the grandson of the late uh, Hezekiah Yugi, who yeah. was a PS of Interior Internal Security, Security yes, in Moist time. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's always been a question, uh, you know, in the family mm-hmm. as to who would run. But for me, as of now, my goals are just you know plainly on business. Mm-hmm. In the corporate world, so I'm not even really uh, active politically. Okay. Uh, you know, I won't even uh, tell you particularly, you know, anything aligning to the parties that I support, etc. Mm-hmm. So for now, I'll put that aside and mm-hmm. concentrate on business. And that's that's the main thing as an entrepreneur right now is just to build my businesses successfully. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I can think about, of course, the community and how I can help. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. So did you consider... I did running I did mm-hmm. for you know maybe a week. <laughs> <laughs> what changed? <laughs> uh, I looked at it like okay, f- age factor mm. to where you know if I go politics, that means you're putting your business life aside. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's it's not something 
that you can enter half-heartedly. You have to really give it your all mm. and uh, in order to succeed, mm-hmm. you know. And also, I think it takes someone to actually enter leadership, not only from a leadership perspective, but, you know, something whereby you can do something for the community. Mm-hmm. Which I still have a lot of things that I'm, I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. And I think once I kind of take off that checklist... Mm-hmm. I'll probably be considering something. Okay. I'm so curious. You are uh, very inspiring. Uh, You're very motivating on social media. Where does that come from? Number one, um, I guess I read a lot. Okay. Uh, I always tell people knowledge is is very power and it's power. Mm. And it it, helps direct my thought process Mm -hmm. in whatever I do. So it's something that, you know, if I come up or I think about something motivational, it's always either whatever I'm probably going through Mm -hmm. to motivate other entrepreneurs because I feel like that's lacking, the passion, Mm. you know, especially in this age group right now. Yeah. People are kind of getting sucked into either looking for jobs or, you know, whatever the case might be. But Mm -hmm. the real reality of the situation is, you know, there are no jobs out there. Mm. So nobody's going to come and, you know, pick you up you know, not your parents, because probably their mindset is a bit different. Mm -hmm. Not the government, you know, not someone, you know, you're waiting for. So when you're done waiting and you pick yourself up and motivate yourself, you know, to kind of push on and start a business and start whatever it is, Mm -hmm. you kind of take, you know, the position into your own hands. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, you know, experience will be the best teacher. Yeah. Yeah, So I kind of, whatever gems I drop, you know, it's just to motivate any future entrepreneur out there who's trying to start something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, um, just enlighten them and, you know, keep them, keep the fire burning, mm. you know, in them. Because I know it can be tough. Yeah. And they can learn something. Mm. Yeah. As an entrepreneur, I'm sure you can be able to distinguish a good idea and a bad idea. I'm quite curious, what is a bad business idea and what is a good business idea? And when should you be able to invest fully? into something that you're probably trying to start yeah um it depends you see you have to look at it from okay if i'm an investor Mm -hmm. and you come up with an idea let's say you want to start a petrol station or you know a radio Mm -hmm. um, media outlet you Mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. Uh, for me it goes about the market you know so i have to look at you know the market capability Mm -hmm. And what, uh, let's say, for example, if it's the food and uh, beverage industry, Mm -hmm. this is the numbers, this is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So whenever, you know, there's not any right or good, because Mm -hmm. you you definitely can't really tell if it's going to be successful or not. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely the person behind that idea Mm -hmm. that will drive its success. Mm -hmm. Secondly, of course, uh, you know, getting to the marketing, the sales, that whole kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm always able, like, as a as an entrepreneur who's been in the game, to work with people and direct people. Mm-hmm. But it also depends on, you know, someone's determination. Mm-hmm. I do partner up a lot with other people. Mm-hmm. And kind of, uh, I'm able to, one of the good things I would say for me is to accept that I can't do everything, you know? True. So everyone, uh, you know, if you're in the medical industry, I wouldn't know how to manufacture, you know, whatever it is, medicine mm. that these guys are doing. So if someone comes up and tells me this is the industry, mm-hmm. this is what we're doing, mm-hmm. and I do a background check on the person, mm-hmm. and I understand the numbers, then I'm able to work with you. Yeah. But if ideally you have an idea and you're not ready to push it and execute mm. and get ready for the struggle, mm-hmm. because it starts off, you know, by just starting off. Mm. So you have to, like, really get into it. Mm-hmm. But the main thing for me with... Uh, a good idea or bad idea is the person driving the idea. Okay. Have you ever invested in a business or an idea? Yeah. I mean, um, I normally tell people there are f- four people, four types of people in society. Okay. You're either self-employed, mm-hmm. employed, mm-hmm. a business owner, mm-hmm. or an investor. Mm. So depending on that category. So as an investor... Uh, I would say I've achieved that uh, that that category right now. Mm-hmm. I've invested in land. Okay. Um, I'm now. I think I'll break off into real estate before the end of this year mm-hmm. in Kilifi. Mm-hmm. Uh, that'll be um, to develop some villas as well. Mm-hmm. 
So I've invested in in real estate. I've invested in a few businesses, mm-hmm. uh, which the betting industry. Uh, I think you've seen a couple of uh, the companies that I've run. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, even the marketing agency in itself was an investment, is an investment, mm-hmm. and I still pay employees. It's a business that is running. Mm-hmm. Um, on top of that. I'm also keen into digital marketing and the billboards mm-hmm. industry. So I have billboards as well, mm-hmm. which I have in Riverside. I'm now shipping in digital billboards. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I want to go further into researching the potential of the digital marketing space, mm. artificial intelligence, and different ways that you can work with, you know, billboards to kind of, you know, create a smart interaction. Mm. Okay? So I'm looking at the future of that as well. Yeah. Which I believe, you know, Kenyans are very talented. True. One of the things I've come to sort of uh, pick up in my journey is the intelligence in some of these, you know, individuals who are in IT, mm. who have actually built some of my websites that I, I run as well. Mm-hmm. And successfully, you can just see, you know, what... Uh, other countries are learning from Kenya, especially on the IT technology front. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, we are ahead. So if we can actually be keen into tapping into, you know, that sort of um, like uh, fintech and yeah, fintech and all that, mm. there's a there's so much potential. Yeah, a lot of potential. Yeah, yeah. that's incredible. Uh, somebody here is asking, what does Nelly Oaks like doing in his free time? Do you need business? Sana, sana. And I say, do you need business talk? <laughs> no, of course, you know, I've been, you know, of course I'm in entertainment. I, I definitely enjoy going out. Mm-hmm. But, you know, mostly for me, number one is all work. You mm-hmm. know, uh, play when, you know, you get to enjoy your sweat. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, I work out. Um Beginning of the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, towards the end, of course, I enjoy a good read. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I listen to um, a lot of motivational and spiritual as well. You mm-hmm. know, I listen to T.D. Jakes, a mm-hmm. couple of other um, pastors out there. Mm-hmm. Just to, you know, get some spiritual nourishment as well on this journey. Yeah. And, you know, putting God first is what's key. Mm. And also understanding the the ability to have faith in whatever you do. Mm. What does like what does a day look like in your life? <sighs> Let me even say for today. <laughs> Let's check. see. Do you have? Do you always like schedule and know what you're doing before? Mm-hmm. Wow. No, definitely. Even my outfit. You have to. You know. Even your outfit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I have an aunt who used to do the same thing a day you, before. Day before, just. Mm-hmm. Get picture what your day is going to be mm-hmm. understand that some people you know have to understand that effective planning you know you have to set yourself to plan to mm-hmm. succeed true and true. that's with your mind with your body and everything with your wellness mm-hmm. so particularly like today after this interview mm-hmm. i have a meeting at around 11 mm-hmm. at my lawyer's office in mm-hmm. upper hill mm-hmm. and i have a lunch meeting at fairview at 1 30 um that's business meeting mm-hmm. then i get back to the office mm-hmm. at around 2 30 mm-hmm. i'll spend maybe two three hours mm-hmm. then i have a flight to eldorad at eight 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 something eight twenty wow this evening. so you're always on the move always on the move always on the go mm-hmm. you know d- looking for different opportunities mm-hmm. like i'd say i've businesses in Mombasa, Kilifi, mm-hmm. Eldoret now, just mm-hmm. prospecting farming now, mm-hmm. which is looking very interesting. Yeah. So I'm just going there, doing my research. Like mm-hmm. I encourage people, always do your research before yeah. you, know, you go into any uh, business. Mm. So yeah, typical day. It's never in one particular you know, area. Area so or order. Always, I'm constantly moving. Okay. So yeah. Interesting. I have one more last question because my time is sadly up. Yeah. What would Nelson want to be remembered for? Um, hmm. What would I want to be remembered for? Mm. For me, it would be to be remembered by the amount of people I have helped Mm -hmm. to better themselves, Mm. to also achieve success. Mm -hmm. Because for me, it's about the community and it's about putting Kenya on Mm. the map. Mm. 
Yeah, nice. I like that because here at Radio 254, that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> and I love, yeah, I yeah. love everything about the 254 radio. Mm-hmm. You guys are doing an amazing job. And this is Thank where you. it's at. This is the, the hustle yeah. and bustle. Yeah, yeah. Um, just uh, point us in the way of these brands mm-hmm. and uh, we shall definitely continue what we're doing and make it even bigger For and sure. go out there better. Um, please give us your social media handles and any last mm-hmm. words you'd like to tell the people listening in. Okay. Um, social media on Instagram, it's at Nelly Oaks. Mm-hmm. Uh, Twitter, at Nelly Oaks, but I'm not so active on Twitter. Facebook, at Nelly Oaks. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's my social media handle. Mm-hmm. Last words would be, um, hmm. tell us, give us some words of wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can try mm-hmm. and fail, mm-hmm. but never fail to try. Mm. Nice, nice. Thank you so, so much, Nelly, for coming through. It has been an amazing conversation. Just getting to talk to you has motivated me to do more, to get out there more, to question, to do my research, and to plan. (laughs) Thank you so, so much for coming through and just uh, keep on doing what you're doing. Uh, You're such an inspiration to so many people out there who are trying to be entrepreneurs, who are trying to get into that entertainment industry. And yeah, just keep hustling keep pushing i want to say thank you and i also want to thank all my listeners for tuning into the 5 a.m club man it's been such an amazing show but i want to tell you guys not to go anywhere because after me is morning with russ and he has an amazing show lined up for you make sure that you go copy your tickets as well for the open mic night happening on the first of july on our website www.254 dot radio i'm gonna leave you guys playing low-key the great villa in a far low-key 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 low